In this video, you will see how to synchronize Google Calendar events to your Outlook Calendar using Power Automate. When you create, update or delete events on the Google Calendar, it will synchronize with the Outlook Calendar automatically. This is one-way synchronization. Whenever you do an action on your Google Calendar, it should update on your Outlook Calendar. I have another video demonstrating the opposite process. In that video, I show how to create Power Automate flow to synchronize Outlook Calendar events with your Google Calendar. Please check the video description or the pinned comment for the link to that video. This is the Power Automate dashboard. You can visit make.powerautomate.com to open this dashboard. You can also open the Power Automate dashboard from the App Launcher menu on your Outlook. Here I'll go to the Create menu. Now I see the automated cloud flow. I'll select it. I'll name the flow to sync Google Calendar events to Outlook Calendar. For the trigger, I'll search with Google. Here under Google Calendar, I see when an event is added, updated or deleted from a calendar. I'll select this and I'll click on the Create button. This is the trigger. I'll click on the trigger. Here I need to select my calendar ID. My Google account is already connected. If you are a first time user, you need to connect your account once. I'll click on the calendar ID and I can see my Google account. Learn and subscribe at gmail.com. I'll click on this. How often do you want to check for items? Here I can set the recurrence interval. I'll change the frequency to second and I'll change the interval to 10. You can set the recurrence to a different interval like one hour. I set it to 10 seconds so I do not need to wait longer to demonstrate the process. This trigger will start whenever some action happens on the Google Calendar. Be it a new event, an event is updated or an event is deleted. And it will fetch the details from the Google event. Details like title, description, start time, end time, location and all the other details. So we can use those details to create the same event on our Outlook Calendar. And we can use the details to update or delete an event on the Outlook Calendar. After the trigger, I'll add an action. I'll click on this, add an action. I'll search with time. Here I see the convert time zone action under the date time group. I need this convert time zone action because the date and time format of the Google Calendar is different than the Outlook Calendar. So we need to convert the time and date in a format so that the Outlook Calendar can understand it. I'll select this convert time zone action. In the base time box, I need to enter the fetch time and date from the Google Calendar event. I'll click on this enter the data from previous step option. This is our trigger when an event is added, updated or deleted. I'll click on see more and here I can see all the details the trigger fetches from the Google Calendar event. This is the start date time of the event on the Google Calendar. I'll select this. I need to update this source time zone. For the source time zone, I'll select my Indian time zone. This is my time zone. Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, New Delhi. For the destination time zone, I'll select my time zone again. In this time unit box, I need to select this sortable date time pattern. This converts the date and time correctly. Here I'll update the action name to start time. Now I'll convert the end time of the meeting. For that, I'll search with time again. I'll select convert time zone for the base time. Under this, I'll select this end date time. This is the end date and time of the event on the Google Calendar. I'll update the time zone to my time zone. Same for the destination time zone. And this time you need to sortable date time pattern. For the time zone, you need to select your local time zone in these two boxes. I'll update this action name to end time. We want to get all the updates from the Google Calendar whenever an event is created, updated or deleted. So we need to check if the event is created, updated or deleted. For that, I'll create three conditions. I'll add a new action, add an action and here I can see the control. If you don't see control here, you can search with condition. And under the control group, I see condition. I can click on see more and here I'll see all the actions under control. I'll select condition. In this choose value box, I'll click on this enter the data from previous step. This action type contains if the event is added, updated or deleted. So I'll select this action type is equal to and the value will be added for the new event added. When the condition matches with this action type is added, the flow will go inside the true box. Here I'll add a new action, add an action. I'll search with event under this office 365 outlook group. I'll click on see more. And here I see create event v4. This creates new events on the Outlook calendar. I'll select this. First, I need to select the calendar ID of the Outlook calendar. 
If I go to my Outlook calendar, under my calendars, I see I have three calendars. Calendar, US holidays and birthdays. So I'll select the calendar. This is the calendar I use. Now to create the event on Outlook calendar, I need to add the details from the Google calendar event. For the subject, I'll click on this and I'll select this, enter the data from previous step. I'll pick the title from the trigger. For the start time, I need to use the converted start time. I'll click on this. And here you see start time, the converted time. We converted the date and time so the Outlook calendar can understand it. I'll select this for the end time. I'll select this converted end time. Here for the time zone, I'll select my local time zone. I'll click on these advanced parameters. And from these advanced parameters, I'll select body and the location. Now I'll click outside here. Here I see the body and the location. For the body, I'll use the body from the trigger. I'll click on this. I see the description. This is the body from the Google Calendar event. I'll select this. And for the location, I'll use the location from the Google Calendar event. Here I see the location. If you don't see these details, click on see more and you'll see all the details. I'll select location. After creating the event, we need to store the event ID in the Google Calendar event and the event ID in the Outlook Calendar event in an Excel file. This is necessary because when we need to update or delete an event, we can find the existing events using their IDs. I'll open my OneDrive. Here I'll add a new Excel file. I need to create the file online so the automated Cloudflow can access the file. I will rename this file to TG Sync Google Calendar Events to Outlook. Here I'll add two columns. The first column is Google Event ID and the second column is Outlook event ID. Now I need to convert these columns into a table. So in the Power Automate flow, we can access the columns using the table reference. I'll select the columns. Here I'll select format as table. I can select any of the style I see here. I'll select my table has headers. I'll click on OK. Now the columns have been converted into a table. When the table is selected, I can see this menu table design. Here's the table name, table one. I can rename the table name to something else. I'll keep the default table name. To store the event IDs in the Excel file, I'll add a new action. I'll search with add row. Under this Excel online business group, I'll select the action add a row into a table. I need to locate the file. I'll click on this arrow. I'll select OneDrive for business. For the document library, I'll select OneDrive. Here I need to locate the file. And this is the file, TG Sync Google Calendar Events to Outlook. I'll select this. I'll select the table, table one. After selecting the table, I'll click on this advanced parameters box. And here I see the columns from the table, Google Event ID and Outlook Event ID. I'll select the columns. In this Google Event ID box, I'll add the ID for the Google event. I'll click on this. I need to find the trigger. And this is the trigger. I'll click on see more. I'll scroll down. Here I see event ID. This is the unique identifier of the Google event, which we are fetching from the trigger. I'll click on event ID. And in this Outlook event ID box, I'll click on this. I see the create event v4 action. I'll click on see more. Here I'll scroll down and I see the ID. This is the ID of the Outlook event. In this action, first it will create the event and then it will have the ID. This is the same ID. I'll save the flow. It says the interval value is not valid. So I'll update the recurrence interval. Here I'll change it to 20. Now I'll save this. The flow is saved now. Now I'll try the flow by creating an event. I'll click on the test button. Here I'll select manually. I'll click on test. I'll go to my Google calendar. And for 24, here I'll create a new event. I'll make it 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Here I'll add Google Meet for video conferencing. For the location, I'll type any location. I'll select this. I'll add a description. And I'll save it. The flow ran successfully. And if I go to Outlook calendar, I see the event here. In the Excel file, I see the IDs. This is the event ID from the Outlook calendar and this is the event ID for Google calendar event. I'll click on the event. I see the event one test, the location and the description. On the Google Calendar event, we have the Google Meet link to join the meeting. But here, we don't have that. 
In this create event action, we need to add the Google Meet link. I'll click on the trigger here. I'll scroll down. I'll see the outputs. In the body, I'll scroll down. I'll find the Google Meet link. The trigger body contains the Hangout link. So we need to use this Hangout link output in this create event action. I'll click on edit. I'll click on this create event. I want to add the meeting link before this description. I'll press enter and here I'll click on this. Under the trigger, I'll click on see more. I'll scroll down. I don't see the hangout link option here, but we have a workaround. We can use an expression. Instead of this, I'll select this insert expression and I have the expression ready here. I'll copy the expression and I'll paste it. It checks the output in the trigger and in the output, from the body, it fetches the hangout link. I'll click on add and I'll save this. I'll try it by creating a new event. On 25, add a new event, event with Google Meet. I'll just add a Google Meet link. So this is the link. I'll not change anything else. I'll save it. I'll wait until we see it here. It will create a new row here. I see the new row, it means the event is now added to the Outlook calendar. Here I see event with Google Meet, I'll click on this. In the body, I see the Google Meet link. We used an expression to fetch the Google Meet link. Now let's create the actions to update an event. Inside this false, I'll add the next condition. If the event is updated. So I'll select the control. Inside control, I'll select the condition. I'll select this. Under the trigger, I'll select action type. When the action type is equal to updated. To update an event, we need to find the unique identifier of the event which we have in this Excel file. This is the reason we have created this Excel file and we are storing the event IDs. To fetch the event ID, I'll add a new action here. Add an action. I'll search with get row and I see get a row action. I'll select this. I need to locate the file, the same Excel file. I'll select OneDrive for business here. For the document library, I'll select OneDrive. I need to locate the file. I'll scroll down and this is the file. I'll select the same table, that's table 1 and key column. The key column is the column by which we want to search in the Excel file. In the trigger, we will have the Google event ID. So I'll select Google event ID and the value, I'll get the value from the trigger. I'll click on see more. Here I'll select event ID. So with the Google event ID, I'll search for the row here and then I'll fetch the ID from the Microsoft calendar. The next action after getting the ID is update event. I'll add an action. I'll search with event. Under this Office 365 Outlook, I'll click on see more. I'll look for update event. And here I see update event v4. I'll select this. I'll select the calendar ID of my Outlook calendar that is calendar. For the ID, I'll select the ID that is the Outlook event ID. We are getting the Outlook event ID from the Excel file using the Google event ID. We are getting the Google event ID from the trigger. The subject, I'll use the same subject from the trigger, the title. Start time, we need to use the converted start time. This is the converted start time. For the end time, I'll use the converted end time. And for the time zone, I'll search for my time zone, Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, New Delhi. I'll click on the advanced parameters. I'll select body and location. In the body, first I'll copy the expression here so that we get the Google Meet link. If you have any, I'll click on the insert expression option. I'll paste the expression, the same expression we have used earlier. I'll add it. I'll press enter and now I'll fetch the description from the Google Calendar using this description. For the location, I'll fetch the location from the trigger location. I'll test the flow after creating the last condition that is delete an event. So inside the false, I'll add an action. I'll select control. I'll select condition. And here, I'll select the action type is equal to deleted. When the action type is deleted, first we need to get the ID from the Excel file. So I'll add an action. I'll search with get row. I'll select this get a row action. I need to locate the Excel file, OneDrive for business. Document library is OneDrive. File is the same file. Table is table one. 
key column is the Google event ID because we are getting the Google event ID only in the trigger and the key value. I'll click on the see more. Here I'll select event ID. Here I'll add another action that is delete event. I see delete event v2 under office 365 outlook. I'll select this, the calendar ID, the same calendar ID of the outlook calendar. Here the ID of the event on the Microsoft calendar. I'll click on this enter the data from previous step. I'll select outlook event ID. Finally, when the event is deleted, I want to delete the row as well. I'll add the last action, add an action. I'll search with delete row. Here I see delete row under Excel online business. I'll select this delete a row action. I'll need to locate the file again. OneDrive for business. Document library is OneDrive. File is the same file. This file. The table is table one. Key column. Here I can use the Google event ID or the Outlook event ID. Because in this situation, we will have the event IDs from both calendars. I'll select Google event ID. For the key value, I'll select this and I'll select Google event ID. I'll save the flow now. Now let's try this. At the left side, I have my Google calendar and at the right side, I have my Outlook calendar. We have already tried it with creating an event. Now let's try it by updating an event. Here on the Google calendar, I'll select this event. I'll click on edit and I'll update the time from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the end time is 11 a.m. In the description, I'll write this event is updated. I'll click on save. It will take 20 seconds because in the trigger, we have set the recurrence interval to 20 seconds. Now I can see on the Outlook calendar, the event has been updated. I added this, this event is updated in the body and I updated the time to 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Now on the Google calendar, I'll add one more event for 27. I'll name it third event. I'll add the Google Meet link. I'll add a description. Hello. I'll save it. So we added the third event. I'll update the first event. So you can see how it works when we are working on multiple events at the same time. I'll change the name to event one, update it, save. I'll add one more event for Friday, fourth event. I'll save it. And I will delete the event that is on Monday. Delete. Now you see side by side, the calendars look same. Same events and same name. The Outlook calendar doesn't have the deleted events and it has everything updated as we can see on the Google calendar. So it works perfectly. I'll go to the Power Automate flow. Here I'll click on go back. When I scroll down, here I can see the run history. Here you see the turn off option. You can turn off the flow when you don't need it. Just click on turn off and the flow will not work. Since this is an automated cloud flow, you may want to turn it off or on for some reason. The trigger checks for new event in every 20 seconds. When it finds a new action on the Google Calendar, first it converts the start time and date and end time and date and the action type is a new event. Then the flow goes this side and creates an event and saves the event IDs in this Excel file. And this is the second condition. And in the second condition, when the action type is updated, the second condition works. First, it fetches the event IDs from the Excel file and then it updates the event. And when the event type is deleted, the third condition works. First, it fetches the event IDs from the Excel file, then it deletes the event on the Outlook calendar and then it deletes the row in this Excel file. That's the end of this video. If you need the opposite synchronization method, please watch the video in the first comment or in the video description. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you find this video helpful. Write your queries and suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.